Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at St. Paul Lutheran. Whether you're a member of this congregation or if you are a visitor, we are glad to have you and it's a good uh, day because we receive God's word again today on this second Sunday of Advent. So uh, please check your bulletin for announcements. Uh, In two two weeks from today, on the third or fourth Sunday of Advent, we'll have our Christmas program put on by our Sunday school kids so we can look forward to a lot of Christmas hymns to be sung and wonderful scripture uh, that tells the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. So uh, that's a couple weeks from now. As I said before, check your bulletin for other announcements, uh, and there are several. Uh, For now, we're going to begin, as we do in the season of Advent, uh, with a a lighting of the candle and a liturgy around that. So, today we gather around the Advent wreath to light our second candle, the candle of peace. Just as the angels announced peace and goodwill at the birth of Jesus, We pray that his kingdom would come among us now by faith. A word from the prophet Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As we light our Advent candle, we thank you, Lord, for the peace you give. In our lives of confusion and stress, bring peace to our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and families be resolved. May there be peace in our world. Help us to see paths of peace in our lives and then give to us courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that you are the giver of lasting peace. Amen. As the first and second candles are lit, please join in singing our Advent verse. now ask you to rise for the call to worship. We gather under the sign of the cross and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let heaven and earth praise the Lord. Let all of creation praise the name of the Lord. Praise kings, or praise God, kings and all peoples, princes and all other rulers, girls and young men, old and young alike. Let us all praise the name of the Lord and worship the Prince of Peace. 
Our opening hymn is Prepare the Royal Highway. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Beloved in the Lord, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie, and the truth is not in us. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus washes away all our sin. Let us confess our faults to God, knowing that he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, who knows us, you have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. Forgive us our sins and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
people of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Hear the promise first given in baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, the Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end, may your Spirit kindle in us a heart so willing to follow your Son that your reign of righteousness and peace is made visible through our lives. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, come on up for the children's chat. All right. Good morning, kids. Do you know who John the Baptist is? Yes. What do you know about him? Yes, he did baptize Jesus, and that'll come later in our church year. What else do you know about him? He baptized other people, and he talked about how Jesus would come. Yes, he baptized other people, he washed them in a river, and he pointed to someone, and you said it, Greta, he pointed to the Savior who would come. He pointed to Jesus Christ. So, um, some other things about him. Would you expect him to be the kind of person that would be God's messenger? Yes. He wore camel's hair for his clothes. That's pretty weird. Guess what else? He ate bugs. He ate locusts. You know, like those grasshoppers we saw so much of this past summer? He ate those. Does that sound very yummy to you? What do you think, Silas? Would you like to eat a grasshopper? John the Baptist did. Does that give, make you a little bit, well, why would God use a messenger who ate bugs and had camel's hair for clothes? Let me tell you something. You don't need to worry about the person who gives you God's word, God's messenger, it, what he eats, or she eats, or what they look like and what they wear. But you do need to pay attention to what they say. Now, even strange people like me are used to give God's word to other people. And he might even use you in that way too. As long as you're doing something that you're plagiarizing Christ, you're saying what Jesus Christ says. So, Here's what you're going you're gonna to say. You're not going to look at their diet. And you're not going to look at what they look like at all. Instead, are they telling you the truth about Jesus? And what is the truth? If someone comes to you and claims to be a messenger and says, well, you've got to do this, that, and another thing in order for God to love you, are they telling you the truth? They're not. And if they say, well... God knows everything about you, yeah. And, yeah, there's no way he could love you. Are they telling you the truth? No. No, they are not. You know they're telling the truth no matter what they're eating, no matter what they're doing, if they're telling you the truth. And that is this. You are God's child. He promises to be yours forever, and he promises to forgive you for all of your sins. Now, if they tell you that, and while they're eating bugs, that's strange, but it's true. So let's remember that and have ears to hear that. Why don't we pray about that, okay? Let's do an echo prayer. Dear God, help us to have ears to your truth. 
no matter who it might come through. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Go ahead and head back. And we'll now have our readings. Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. And you can also follow along if you'd like in your pew Bibles on page 1076. A branch from Jesse. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with fear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on, his ho on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. Our responsive psalm is Psalm 72, and again, if you'd like to follow along, that's on page 908. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through the all generations. In his days, the righteous will flourish, prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 15, starting at verse 4. And again, if you'd like to follow along, it is on page 1,766. For everything that is written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that when with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, to confirm the promises made of the patriarchs, so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again, it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and sing praises to him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up. 
one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope, will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here ends our reading. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, Christ, our Lord and God. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Christ, our Lord and God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, sound travels far in the desert. It's almost like hearing someone out on a boat on a calm lake. The sound just carries. These days we know more than most people that it's more peaceful out in the country. We like it out here. Rural areas get us away from the relative danger and crime of ur the urban cities? Well, you can forget that notion in the wilderness where John the Baptist was crying out. Back then, the cities were the places to find law and order. The wilderness of Judea 2,000 years ago had no such peace. This place is untamed lawless, the place where things fly around loose in the wind. Forget safety and any semblance of control in this cutthroat nature and wilderness. You don't settle down in a place like this. You just find a way to survive it. You're out there. You'd like to get some sleep, but you keep hearing something creeping around in the pitch black desert. Is that a cougar? Put the dogs away. This is where the wild things are. Yes, this wilderness is the setting, and the main character that we begin with is John the Baptist. John actually comes from the priestly Levite line. His mom is Elizabeth the descendant of Aaron, Israel's first high priest. His father, Zechariah, was a priest himself in the order of Abijah. And what are the priests supposed to do? Ironically, 
they're supposed to stay in the city where the temple is. Priests are the ones charged with making sacrifices there. You know, making themselves right by rituals and offering up what they can muster so that the wrath of God could be evaded. If anyone should be in the temple in the city of Jerusalem, it should be John the Baptist. But he is not in the temple. He's in the desert, covered in camel's hair and with a homemade leather belt keeping up his pants. He's eating bugs and flipping things upside down. You could imagine his parents' disappointment. John the Baptist isn't acting like a priest, but a prophet. He is preparing the way of the Lord out in the wilderness. Now you might think, shouldn't this happen differently? Shouldn't the way be prepared in the places where the higher-ups are? The priests have the king's ear, being close to the ruling class in the city. Wouldn't that be the place to prepare for the Messiah? The prophets, not the priests, had a different word, a different place, a different audience too, and all of it was harsh. The prophets were the outsiders with no place to rest their heads. They called out the unbelief, the idolatry, the sins of the priests, the rulers, and higher-ups. You think you're cool by your sacrifices? Come on, repent, the prophets said. Watch out, flee from the wrath of God that is for your idolatry. The prophets are admired by history, but in their own time, they're hated. You don't invite prophets like Isaiah or Elijah or John the Baptist over for supper. Society and the world would call them weirdos and does everything they can to silence their calls of repentance. Usually killing the prophets is the strategy. But for now, hear this. Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan River were going out to him, leaving the cities and houses to hear him and see him. John the Baptist isn't going into the city to exert influence, even though you'd expect the Savior of the chosen people to show up in the temple or the one preaching about him. But now people are going out to John the Baptist in the desert. Why? And you might too think about why you're here at St. Paul Lutheran this morning. Some are surely going out there to see the wheels fall off. John the Baptist, the wilderness prophet, is a spectacle. People love a spectacle. You probably wouldn't mind being a witness to your pastor this very fine morning falling on his face walking up or down these steps. That'd be fun. The funniest home videos are the ones where people slip or fall or get knocked over. Will Smith, Oscar's slap punch, was googled 25 times more than the movie that won Best Picture. What makes us laugh, what provides the most entertainment for us, is also the stuff that makes us cringe. Spectacles and gossip that condemns the others. Not just the kind that puts their feet to the fire, but the kind that ruins a person. Well, that's juicy. Appealing. We're in for that drama. Did you hear what Zachariah and Elizabeth's kid is doing these days? Did you hear what he called the Sadducees and Pharisees? Yeah, started with brood and ended with vipers. Can you believe his locust diet or the camel hair outfit he's trying to pull off? Yes, people have always loved a spectacle. Some are there to watch the action. And how about those Sadducees and Pharisees in the audience? 
even though these fat cats in shiny suits would eventually unite in opposition to Jesus Christ, these two groups are usually constantly fighting with each other about matters of the law, society, and theology. But why are they there? Are they coming to be baptized? Or are they, or are they just watching? Tough to know. But this is clear. These are the guys who have a long line of Israelite genealogy on their side. Their idea of Israel and their place in it as the children of Abraham is founded on the notion of physical succession. Ask them what makes Abraham their father, and they'll just point to their mom, dad, and grandparents. It's my bloodline. Well... Our wilderness prophet, John, doesn't think they should even be there. He goes on a tirade that opposes everything sacred in Israel. You brood of vipers, liars, hypocrites. You think you're the son of Abraham? Get real. God could raise up a stone to that status. And who your parents are has nothing to do with it. Your bloodline isn't producing any fruit for God or your neighbor, and you should be cut down and thrown into the fire. Why are you even here? I wasn't warning, repenting, and preparing you guys. So we've got the spectacle seekers out in the wilderness, and now the fat cats from the temple in Jerusalem. Is anyone else there? Yes. There are those who might be considered by the other two groups to be the riffraff. Those whom the temple and the sacrifice system is not hitting the mark or cutting the mustard for. Those who know the weight of their sins. The trees who know they should be cut down and thrown into the fire. The chaff that deserves to burn those battered by spouses and society in the wilderness of chaos, the wilderness of a hospital bed, those beggars who wonder if they'll ever be able to stand up again with shoulders back. These are the ones who know the truth about themselves, that they're sinners. They've exhausted all the power they had to no avail, They have no power left to do something about their sins. So they look for the one who will wash them away. So the wilderness is the place. John the Baptist provides the word. And these three groups comprise the audience. And what will that word be? John is clearly rejecting the temple. But he's not exactly rejecting the law or marking its end. The whole notion that there is another basis of righteousness had been buried for a long, long time. John the Baptist might be outside the priestly class and location, but he was still working and preparing within the law's boundaries. He was preparing the way through repentance and incremental change promoting a daily washing in the Jordan River, aimed at improving morality and behavior before the Messiah comes. Now later, John the Baptist became confused about what Jesus came to do and who he was coming for. The preparer, John the Baptist, wasn't even prepared for what Jesus was going to do. And how was that preparation going? Often, instead of transforming us and changing us, repentance and the call to repentance turns us further into ourselves. Our apologies come up woefully short. We confess because we get caught. And the apology of a celebrity falling from grace or from our very own mouth in our day-to-day life comes out with the sole aim of avoiding further consequences. These apologies are self-serving and skin-saving. We offer excuses 
that deflect blame and superficial emotions that might garner a less severe punishment. So as John the Baptist preaches repentance to get the chaos under control, it remains incomplete. So even though the preparation is incomplete, John the Baptist is still given something else. He is given someone to point to. Someone mightier. Someone coming to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Someone who can do something about the things that we can't do anything about. And who shows up out there in the lawless wilderness? Jesus Christ does. He comes to bring something new in his baptism. Baptism is more than just a washing. Transformation, once and for all, is what he's serving up. Jesus comes right into the wilderness, and this is where he promises to show up for you. Not just when you're ready and prepared and at your best. He comes when chaos reigns and everything is up in the air. When you're out of order, yearning for safety, Christ brings overflowing, messy mercy and forgiveness. This is the promise that our Lord Jesus Christ gives you in your baptism. He didn't challenge you and then walk away. He gave you the Holy Spirit. So hear that promise again. He calls you the wheat that he gathers to himself. The old you was consumed by the unquenchable fire and has no future. But the new you is taken care of by the God of the universe. Christ's death and resurrection are for you. He pulls you away from yourself, your lying, your hypocrisy, your spectacle-seeking, and your self-serving apologies to rest in Christ Jesus. You were a hunched-over beggar on the side of the road, but when Christ makes you a believer, you can walk right down the middle with your shoulders back rejoicing. The one whom John the Baptist pointed to, the Savior, Jesus Christ, has given himself to you. Amen. You may now remain seated as we sing our hymn of the day on Jordan's banks, the Baptist's cry.
ask you to rise if you're able. Let us join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, you have given us your word of law and gospel to reveal our sin and to show us your salvation. Help us to live lives that are marked by trust and repentance. Drown the sinner in us each day and give us new life by the work of your spirit within us. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, in fulfillment of your promises to your people, You sent John the Baptist to call people to repentance and point them to the Savior. Speak your word through your church today and use the proclamation of your word to call all people to faith and draw them to follow Jesus in obedience and grace. Lord, in your mercy. God of righteousness, transform the powerful of the world into self-giving servants that justice and peace may prevail over tyranny and oppression. May world leaders be above reproach as they seek to do what's best for their people. Inspire collaboration between all those who are in leadership positions, that your kingdom of peace may reign. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, stretch out your mighty and gentle hand to those who weep because of grief illness, anxiety, or hardship of any kind. In your loving kindness, bring them joy in the morning. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and poured it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who are baptized have been instructed properly and trust God's word are welcome to the Lord's Supper, where our Lord is truly present offering his gifts of forgiveness and eternal life, the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready.
body of Christ given for you.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is O Little Town of Bethlehem. You can go in peace, loving and serving in the name of our crucified and risen Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> you see you, Dylan.